most important aspect of diapering is to be safe and keep your child safe. So having the procedure would be recommended and I know in centers that is a requirement so that way too if you have new staff they're able to follow the procedure if they've forgotten or for you yourself if you've forgotten something it's just a quick reference. Um, no strap is recommended which might surprise a lot of people but it's something that they found um, for one thing people have relied on and then they've turned away from the child and the child has rolled off and that of course would be not a good thing so therefore the best way to prevent that from happening is to always make sure that your hand is on the child or that at least your body is always in front of the child so that you prevent them from having um, an open side to roll off on. And also the other thing with the straps is that they're really hard to clean. Children tend to hold them and handle them when you're diapering and so diapering um, contaminants can get onto that strap and it's really hard to clean. So the recommendation is to not use it um, and to cut them off if you actually have them or to not purchase with one at all. And like I said, contoured sides are good just because that's another safeguard from an infant or a child being able to roll off. You can also have diapering stations um, that have a side on them that is up to six inches would be recommended just to prevent an infant or a child from rolling off. If you ever put it on a surface that's slippery, like a countertop, another thing that you can do is um, buy grip liner or shelf liner is what I call it, um, that you can find in any home store or your Walmart or Target and just cut a strip and you can place it underneath here and it just will prevent the pad from moving around if you find that it's kind of slippery and tends to shimmy or move on you. The other thing that to look for is that it's all washable, um, that there aren't any tears or any types of um, deep stitching is not recommended just because it's really hard to get clean if there were to get stool, meaning poop, into that stitching, um, it's hard to clean. And if there's any tears, it's just recommended to replace the whole diapering station and not to um, try to duct tape it or try to cover it with anything because that just isn't a continuous surface and the, the contaminants could get inside the pad and grow in there and just be disgusting. Having your supplies out ahead of time just helps make the whole diapering procedure go quicker and faster for you and then therefore hopefully will reduce any risk of an injury. We always have available obviously is um, our diaper wipes and it's really important to get the wipes out ahead of time so you don't want to be having poopy hands and trying to open up the container and get the, um, the wipes out because then you're going to be contaminating the wipes as well. So it's good to know that you should at least always have three out every single diaper change regardless if it's dirty um, meaning poopy or if it's um, just soiled with urine and then I just try to place them somewhere that they're easily accessible um, if you can have those on the edge that usually works good or you can place it here too um, to have three I also leave the container open because you don't know what you're gonna get till you sometimes you're in there um, some of them will need lots of wipes so I always make sure that my wipes are accessible and the cover is open just in case I need more if you know your child needs to have diaper ointment applied um, powder is not recommended just because the small particles that can get in the air can also get into the infants airways and get into their lungs and that that could be something that could give them trouble so not recommended in child care so it would be better to use either a paste or an ointment or a cream something like that so if you do know you need it um, it's not recommended to apply it with your bare hands so it's good you can use a Kleenex that's what I typically use and you can just get that ready by applying some to the Kleenex and then you have that ready um, if you don't know if your child needs it because sometimes you don't know until you've looked at it um, just have it nearby just with some way so you're not having to leave the infant or try to get somebody else to go try to find it for you um, just so you have that readily accessible. You're obviously going to need another diaper. Um, then also it's good to have a bag um, if you do have soiled clothes um, just because we don't want you to wash those out in child care we would like you just to directly bag it up send it home um, we'll obviously tie it off put it out of reach and then send it home with the parents to be laundered later that day so that's something to think about too another thing that works really good if you have a small space is you can put a 3m hook on the wall and then you can hang your bag um, so that you have it out of 
reach and also off of if you don't have enough counter surface, if you just got a changing table and you just don't have enough surface to lay a bag down, that works really well because you can put your soiled items in here and then tie it off so that it's out of reach. So I have a bag. You're also going to need your sanit or excuse me, your disinfectant that you're going to need for disinfecting your pad. And then if the surface is soiled, you'll need your soap and water. So I have those ready. Um, paper towels as your paper barrier. So that's something too is not required, but something that's recommended. Um, this is something that you either can use paper towels. Some people use computer paper. Um, some people have used butcher paper. Um, but basically it's just to have a type of barrier that's disposable that you can put underneath the child. And it's good to at least have um, enough of it so that it would cover at least from the child's back down to the end of their feet. So you can have that ready as well. And then of course gloves. Gloves are not required, but they are recommended. So that's something that I would recommend you do, but you're not required to do. Um, and when you put those gloves on is totally up to you. Some people like to put them on, especially if you know the child has a blowout or you know that they have soiled clothing. It's a good idea to put those on before you actually go out grab the child just because that'll help protect you as well. Another safety tip to remember when you're diapering is to always remember where you're placing um, things that you're going to be applying to the infant's bottom. Just making sure that those aren't within reach um, just so that they're at the other end so they're not up by the head where the child can reach them or a place close that they have potential to reach them. So leaving them over here but having them nearby just in case you need them. The other thing to remember is that whatever your products you're using for on your diapering station it's good or your diaper pad it's good to have those labeled so as you can tell my one has bleach solution um, so that everybody knows that's what's in there the other one that I did was the soap and water so I have it on there soap and water and the other thing just to remember is that they're labeled like I said and that they're also out of reach of a child at all times too just so that a child doesn't have that potential hazard available to them thing to keep in mind is to be respectful and responsive in your care before you do the diapering and after and during. Um, so instead of just going to the child and just grabbing them, picking them up and starting to diaper, it's good to explain to them what you're doing too and approaching them in a kind and respectful way. So hi sweetheart, we're going to go change your diaper. Are you ready? If they are playing with the toy, then this is the time that I would take that toy away just because they can't have a toy up on the diapering station. So then you bring your infant over to the changing station so you can begin diapering. Once again, remembering that you have a child with you and you don't want to just concentrate on the child's little bottom and the diapering procedure itself, but using this time as one-on-one -on -one time um, that you can build that relationship and that attachment with that infant by talking to them and telling them what you're doing. Hi, sweetheart. Are you ready to do your diaper And this would be the time where you would need to put your gloves on and therefore I'm going to have to leave or take my hands off my infant. So I would want my body in front of their body so that they they can't roll off and you can keep one hand on them grabbing my gloves and I would put my gloves on um, I get this question a lot how much clothing Sarah do I need to remove it's up to you if you just kind of have to know your child if it's full of poop and you know that they're just a child that moves and is just such a mover and a shaker that you're just worried about their little feet or shoes getting into it then I would remove them but if you know that it's just wet or if you know that the child is fairly um, you know works with you then you don't need to but so you can just remove enough clothing just to get to the area itself. I use the diaper to get the majority of the poop off the bottom so that I need less wipes so I almost use it as a wiping motion to try to get um, as much poop off and then you can just leave it underneath the infant then you would need to have a wipe obviously and then you would wipe from front to back especially this is important with little girls so you don't introduce poop into the urethra because then they can get a bladder infection. Um, they recommend to use one wipe per wipe, but I feel like you know when you need another wipe, so just fold it. If you know that you could use more wipe, wiping it, just make sure that all the skin is clean, just because if you leave poop on their skin, then of course they can get a diaper rash, so it's just good to get all that off. So once you've cleaned the area, and it's good too if they're just wet, um, to always wipe it with a wipe as well, just because it is a urine soap material with the diaper that's against their skin, and
and that a, a rash could develop or even just the smell and that's just a way to freshen things up. So once you do have that done then what you would do is obviously stay close but then you'd have a step lived garbage nearby that I don't have to leave the infant and then you would drop your diaper into there. If you notice that the that the, um, the paper is soiled, then this would be the time that you would flip it. So, so then you just take the corner with theirs because you don't want to try to touch this area because your air, your gloves could have poop on them. But you touch the corner, then you can place down and then therefore the child's bottom is on a clean surface. This is where you need to take the gloves off. So once again, I'm going to have to let go of my infant, but I need to stay close by and also where in case they were to start rolling, I could intervene. You always want to take off your gloves um, to make sure that you're touching glove to glove, not to wipe underneath your um, underneath the glove on your wrist because then if you had poop on your gloves, you would put all those germs onto your wrist. So you want to grab glove. You can grab at the fingertips. You can grab here. You can grab at the wrist part here. Just just know that you should always touch glove. So I'm taking off my glove, I'm balling it up, then this is without a glove on, so my hand is clean, and I'm able to scoop underneath here, and therefore to take off the glove. Then this glove would also go in the garbage with my step lid here. The wipe here would be for my hands. You always want to do your hands first. Just the reason why is that in case you, when you took your gloves off, you got something on your hands and you don't want to transfer that onto anyone else, the infant, or onto anything else. So wipe your hands first. And then you want to dispose of that in the garbage as well. Then you want to take the third wipe here, and then this is where the child's hands would get washed. Now this is where you take the fresh diaper, and you would place this underneath your infant. And if you did need to apply any type of diaper ointment or cream, this has been would be the time that you did. And like I said at the beginning, I place mine on a Kleenex, so it's all ready to go. It's not on your hands. Then you would apply it to the infant's bottom. Um, other people have also you put on a fresh glove, so you can have another fresh glove that you put on and apply it and then remove it once you've applied the ointment. Other people too have um, placed it on the diaper itself and have applied it that way. That is fine too. The biggest thing to remember is just that you don't want to place it on your bare hands and then apply it just because it gets underneath your fingernails and it's really hard usually when it's a cream to try to get that removed even with hot soapy water. So that's why. And then you want to obviously get them dressed again, get their clothes back on. So they're ready to go. And when you are dressing them, it's just really important to remember that they're lying down when you do this. Um, just because a lot of times when I watch, and a lot of times it's just human nature, you're going to want to take the infant or the child, if they're able to stand, and to stand them on the pad. Just because it's at that height, it seems like that makes sense, it's easier for you, but what happens is, is that I actually can contaminate the bottoms of their feet um, from germs on the diaper pad, and then that would be transferred all over your classroom or into your home. So it's just really important that you make sure that you are um, having them remaining lying down, or you have them holding them while you're putting their clothes on, or you can, if you have enough um, surface that you're able to take them off the pad and have them stand while you're safely holding them. That would be another option, but just not to stand them on the pad. So after you've gotten them dressed, hi sweetie, we're going to go wash your hands. Then it's important to wash their hands, even if you've just, um, it's just a wet diaper, regardless of or if it's poopy wet, um, we still want the hands washed every time. And people often ask me why, because you already used a wipe, and the wipe is good, but it's also good to do the hand washing just because it can also remove more germs you might have missed, but it also teaches them that they learn that once they do something, toileting, diapering, that just is a natural progression to go finish with hand washing. And now it's time to wash the baby's hands. So when you come over to a sink, one thing that's helped me is that to get a step stool, you definitely can hold them you know, without using the step stool, but as the child ages, grows, obviously children come in different sizes, you might find that they get pretty heavy and it gets to be a lot on your back. So therefore the step stool helps a lot because I can put one foot on the step stool. I feel like that stabilizes myself. I can set the child on my knee and therefore I feel like I can get the child close to the sink 
but then also be able to hold the child and also save on my back. Another thing too that they have faucet extenders that you can buy. Um, so those can be attached to the, it's a plastic device that can be attached to your faucet and it just directs the water closer to the infant or to the child. So that is another thing that you can purchase. I haven't found them anywhere um, locally, but you can go online and look for um, a faucet extender and those that would also be something helpful. Um, for licensed care, your water temperature should be 120 degrees, but sometimes that's hard to regulate whether you're in an apartment or sometimes even in your own home or building, sometimes that's hard. And obviously you don't want to burn the child's hands. So it's very important for you to start the water, feel the water before you would put the ha ch children's hands in the water, the child's hands. This is important to dry the child's hands really well to prevent them from ever getting chapped or sore. And then after you've dried the infant's hands, then you can take the paper towel as your barrier and shut off the water. I get asked about what kind of soap to use for children. And for one thing to remember is it really doesn't matter. It's best not to use antibacterial just because that is something they found is not something that we need to have and may actually be something you don't wanna have. So just a regular soap. You might find that moisturizing type of soap might be a good choice too, just because you are washing their hands so often. And the most important thing is obviously to make sure that it's rinsed off well and dried well, just so they don't rub it into their eyes if they're was residual soap left on their hands. The other thing just to remember is that we would like you to shoot for 20 seconds when you wash hands, but as you can tell that I did one at a time, one hand at a time, and I wouldn't expect you to do each hand for 20 seconds. So try to shoot for 10 seconds on each hand when you're washing them and to make suds and then to rinse them well. After the baby's hands are washed, then you would like to, or then it's recommended to return them to a safe place that they can play while you're going back to the changing station and disinfecting the pad and putting things away. And then when you come back to your diaper station that you can go ahead and put things away or get things set, it, set away. So um, it's good to make sure obviously that you would take this and remove this paper off. If you use paper, paper like I said is not required but it is something that's recommended. Once you take this off, you could throw this in the garbage nearby. And then you will look if there's, um, if you did not use paper and it is not soiled, then you can just spray it with the disinfectant itself, which is here. Um, so you can spray the whole thing. And then you wanna make sure that you leave it for the full amount of contact time. When you're using bleach solution, that's a full five minutes of leaving contact time. But whatever product you're using, please read on the directions to see how long you do need to leave contact time before you can wipe it. You can leave it to air dry too, but just then you would need to always have that in your mind so that you do not lay an infant on a chemical. If you were to come and do a next diaper change, you just need to, would need to know that you need to wipe it and make sure it's dry before the next infant lies down. You notice poop was on here or something was smeared on here then what you have to do is you have to use soap and water first so I usually just take a bottle of soap and water you can add a little bit of dish soap to it and then you can um, use it until gone you don't have to mix it every day but that's something to have nearby as a good plan or a good way you can do it so there I would spray off the pad I take a paper towel and wipe it off because then you've cleaned the pad and then you'd want to dispose of the paper towel and then that's when you'd use your disinfectant and then you'd spray the entire surface and then once again leave it for the full contact time before you either would wipe it dry or at least let it air dry that long um, and then therefore that would be done with what disinfecting your surface and then you'd want to come over to your sink and then you'd want to wash your hands and that's the last thing that you would want to do before you touch anything else or do anything else. So get a temperature that's comfortable for you, get your hands wet, get soap, and then I start making bubbles. 
And it's important to leave your hands out of the water stream when you're doing this, just so you don't rinse the soap off. They would like you to shoot for 20 seconds, and that's of actually making bubbles. So you just wanna make sure you're rubbing all surfaces of your hands, inside, the tops, in between. If you have rings on, like I do, or a ring, just wash around your ring well so that you get the germs away, but don't take it off and then put it on because then you're gonna have a dirty ring on clean hands. If you have long fingernails, just make sure that you clean well underneath those fingernails because that's another area where germs can accumulate. If you have a watch on, which I do, just try to push that up if you can and then just kind of wash around it there because you want to get the wrist too. And once you've washed for 20 seconds, then we need to rinse our hands. Get all the soap off, leave the water running, get a paper towel, dry your hands well so that they do not get chapped or get sore. And after I've gotten my hands dried, I take the paper towel and I use that as my barrier to shut off the faucets without touching the faucet with my clean hands. Then I take the paper towel and I dispose of that in an open garbage.